Hello, my soccer universe, and that's the last review video before we go into the international break. We are probably have to do a little preview also. And yeah, I am also planning to uh, start doing soonish a La Liga jersey review. Um, the weekend was actually um, quite crazy. We had a Barcelona performance <laughs> that is noteworthy, uh, but this time a little bit more on the positive side. We have a really impressive Atletico and we had a game between Valencia and Real Madrid. That is also absolutely abnormal. And then we had a little bit COVID chaos in there as well. So that's good. In France, uh, yeah, PSG, despite having now 10 men down, separating themselves from the rest of the um, uh, league, uh, especially since Lille, who was so impressive against Milan, managed to lose. And then we had also a very a crazy eight goal game in there. And in Portugal also, the big favorites, Benfica, and that's why they're only hanging back there, are losing, keeping losing in a very, very crazy fashion, similar to Lille almost. So yeah, and uh, we also have a surprise leader in that league. But let's get started in Spain. And before that, I of course wear the famous... 10-11 uh, Barcelona home jersey. I was thinking about putting Atleti on, but then I wouldn't have them on the wall and that also doesn't serve the purpose. I want to have them on the wall kind of to see the projections up there, which you know what that means. I need another Atleti shirt. Exactly. Okay, let's go to uh, La Liga, where, you know, Elche Celta Vigo. Celta Vigo getting a point, but coach is getting fired. Huesca also won one against Eibar, and, you know, it's kind of typical La Liga style, not many goals until Barcelona Betis hits. Barcelona Betis is one of the most goal-filled matchups over the past 10 years uh, that is there, I think, with average almost 3.6 goals or so. So you can... Uh, expect goals and the 5-2 that it ended up with is also exactly the same result that we had last season but what a different story it was i mean first the big outcry messi is not playing who oh, kuman is tough kuman is angering messi no messi had a knock and had to be set on the bench so i think it was not that big of a drama overall but you know at the moment if messi doesn't press in the last minute the kiev player uh, ev everyone gets already outraged calm down people calm down don't read everything into anything it is <sighs> gets crazy Yes, probably Barcelona could have communicated that one better as well, but you know, uh, I still find it amazing. So we have a lineup. Messi, I think um, this was the first, he could have made 38 games in a, in a row start starting in La Liga, which would have been a full season, no? Did not make it, but we had a starting lineup with Dombele, uh, with Ansu Fati and with Griezmann, with Griezmann playing in his preferred role. And actually, uh, if you take away the finishing, Griezmann played really well, but he missed, I think, two sitters. Uh, where after the second one, you already can see he's really frustrated. And the commenters say, Yeah, and this is the uh part where if you were a uh hobby player, you would just storm off the field, maybe change your jersey because uh, you just want to score that goal. And, and you can see Griezmann was really trying. Uh, it is to say it well, he actually assisted Dem Dembele's goal, who really took that goal very nicely in the 22nd. But it should have been more. Griezmann missing another chance. Then they get a penalty. Who steps up? Griezmann. Who misses? Griezmann. It was a, vo a weekend full of missed penalties, uh, at least for the games that I uh, watched and, and followed. So Griezmann, although, although playing well, really must have been very upset with himself um, and then uh, even more more says Sanabria in stoppage time gets a 1-1 one, one. that came a little bit of I don't know because I think over Barcelona not playing great but playing good enough and uh, clearly being the better team there and of course it all changes at halftime Ansu Fati had a knock and we know now he had a meniscus injury needs to be operated is out for a few months, let's put it that, 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 that way. And they actually hope, hoping that it will heal. Uh, so they didn't make the full operation, but it, um, where they take it out and he could play again. But no, but they wanted to reconstruct the knee. Maybe this will be better for him in the long term, but you have to wait for him. 
Messi comes on and he does not get an assist for Walt, Walt but immediately has an impact on the game when uh, George Jordi Alba runs down the line, makes a cross in and Messi could take it, but no, he makes a step over because Griezmann is very free in the center box as everyone's going on Messi and puts it in the net and not only does Griezmann get his goal, but Messi showing his worth. Then um, the game really turned and I mean, Betis was... I, I, I don't want to say they were out class because they were actually well in the game, but the uh, game then really turned when uh, Mondi handles on the um, line, which I think the ref didn't see at the, at, at the beginning. But penalty is given, Mondi is sent off, and Messi steps up for a penalty. It's 3 1, game done and dusted. Uh, not so fast, my friend. Loren puts one back and then Messi gets his first goal from open play this season in the 82nd. Uh, could have gotten uh, one more, but uh, that, didn't, uh, that didn't count. And then Pedro in the 90th, after Sergio Roberto, assist, he also assisted Messi before. Makes it 5 to resounding victory for Barcelona, Peter Sweet, because Ansu Fati is now out. Yeah, we know there are injuries everywhere and maybe not the best, but yeah, at least we have uh, Messi look good and Barcelona actually looks like a team that could go somewhere, but not yet a convincing team. Uh, Sevilla, I didn't see much, but gets finally to winning ways again with a 1-0 over Osasuna and then Atletico Madrid. At the moment, I would have to say they are at least the second best team in Spain uh, from where they are playing. Because with uh, Luis Suarez in there, uh, uh, Joao Felix Sanson has a striker to uh, play off with. And uh, that, I think, makes a whole lot of difference. Of course, we need to talk about the goalkeeping as well. Um, I mean, the first uh, goal, the goalkeeper is out. Uh, Marcos Llorente can uh, cross it in onto Joao Felix's head, who heads it into the empty net. Then on the second one, I mean, first, first of all, the defender, he gets the ball, I think, from Trippier. Um, then the defender makes a mess out of uh, his challenge, and Llorente then pokes it towards the near corner that is completely open, uh, so the goalkeeper, yeah. The first two goals are on the goalkeeper, but Atletico Madrid are looking better and better, especially with Joao Felix getting in really great form. Uh, Joao Felix then in the second half assists Luis Suarez, who also gets his, his goal, and then uh, deep into stops, of which time Correa assists uh, Joao Felix again. So he is the big star, and he is about to become one of the big stars of the league. Uh, Villarreal gets a big win at Getafe, then Real Sociedad Granada, a game that probably should not have been played. Um, Granada having quite some players down with COVID, they had to travel in a bubble to Nicosia. I mean, there's a whole thing, listen to the Spanish football podcast because they explain it quite well, but in, in the end, Granada was arguing we don't have enough players because uh, we have the staff is infected and, you know, we, can't, we, we, we don't have enough squad players and the league is saying, yes, you do, because you signed the protocol that you have to get up youth team players. And as far as I remember, in La Liga, you can have only five, you can, must have a minimum of five first team players in the squad and then the rest can be filled up. And yes, we have some team, uh, some players that are not fit, but that doesn't really matter to La Liga. So the game has to be played. Um, easy 2-0 win for Real Sociedad to also miss a penalty. Uh, the curious thing is that uh, at halftime uh, the coach takes off Soldado and Kennedy, a Granada coach, so two first team players, so there are only five, and then uh, he takes another one off uh, with Molina in the 76th, so they have only four first team players. What will that mean? That means that probably the game will be uh, uh, that Rasa will be handed a 3 0 victory. Uh, precedent set in La Liga, but it's whole, it doesn't, in a way, it doesn't feel quite right. But you know, with this fixture congestion and you know, both teams playing the Europa League, what it's tough, but what can you do? Uh, Levante Alaves won one. Real Valladolid gets a win over Bilbao. Bilbao again uh, doing crazy things. Uh, one week they are playing well, then the other one they're losing against uh, one of the. Worst, team, worst teams in the league. But, you know, all the eyes were on Valencia Real Madrid, uh, which was a really crazy game. Uh, the scoreline says 4-1 for Valencia, and I did not see it live. I only saw after the Milan game, and I saw 4-1. Wow, Valencia, and I did not expect it, because Valencia is kind of this, uh, uh, all the assets have been stripped from them. 
in in a way and you really thought wow they must have destroyed Real Madrid, Real Madrid must have had a, hor a horrible showing no this was actually a rather even game and then you realize there were so many penalties given against Real Madrid to boot I mean what have we been saying since the Covid came back Real Madrid win you win 1-0 with a penalty by Sergio Ramos no this time uh, the um, whole defense combusted in a way and it started well Marcelo plays a ball to Monsema who takes a really nice shot and gives him a 1-0 lead uh, Valencia has a goal disallowed by Musa. yes right for so there was an offside and then the 35th minute the first penalty uh, that for uh, that initially was saved by uh, Courtois but the player was running in too early and I think even Courtois was a little, little bit of last so Lea had to re retake his penalty in the 35th minute then in the 43rd Varane produces an own goal um, and I don't know now exactly who did what penalty I only know the last penalty was a really a stupid foul by Sergio Ramos and all the penalties there was no need to do these fouls. It was really out of, of nowhere. But there, in the second half, two more penalties given in the 54th and 63rd. That Soler is converting, becoming the first player to score three penalties in one game in La Liga. And in addition, it's the first time ever that Real Madrid had three penalties against them. Uh, that is just unbelievable in many many ways it was a crazy game and that was one game where the only penalty that was missed in the end didn't count so yeah uh, Valencia getting a huge win 4-1 over Real Madrid to soothe their souls a little bit so um, this leads us to the following standings we have Real Sociedad top of the table ahead of Villarreal but look at Atletico Madrid two games in hand if they win those two they are three points clear on top of the table uh, so that's a uh, big Real Madrid now would only leapfrog uh, via Real uh, Barcelona also two games in hand let's hand it just for our argument's sake so that's 17 points so they would be right behind via Real as well so um, you know despite Barcelona being uh, so far down it's also because they have many uh, uh, they have two games less played and the same thing goes for Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid really, really fi finding their own or came into their own in this break. Before that they had won a good performance and they had a few so-and-so and then they got into their own and now, uh, especially with Joao Felice firing on all cylinders, looks really, really good. They are also now the currently the favorites to win the championship and you have the feeling in this wide open La Liga at the moment that yes, Atletico Madrid probably has a has one of their best chances. I mean, already last season, but there they were still forming the team. Now, it really, really looks like the Atletico Madrid uh, could do some damage in there. So they are ahead of Barcelona. Real Madrid losing now is again behind Barcelona. The three of them are also for the Champions League. But now Real Sociedad League looks pretty. Sevilla, yes, they got a win. Also two games less. So uh, their position is probably also not as bad as it looks like at the moment but you know only 20 20 percent chance Villarreal has a big a bigger chance of getting in there the next round I mean everything points to uh the big matchup between Atletico Madrid and Barcelona on Saturday uh that is a huge one uh also the, uh on in the afternoon four o'clock slot uh Villarreal and Real Madrid could be a very 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 interesting one uh, the rest, I think Cadiz against Real Sociedad is uh, maybe a sleeper, uh, but we have to see uh, how many players are fit and so on and so on and so on. Let's go to France where we also had a few, a couple of crazy games. I think Olympique Marseille won with just one shot on goal, which is the first time that ever happened in Ligue 1. Uh, Bordeaux continues their horrible form, uh, Tony loss at home to Montpellier. PSG. Uh, already entering this game with eight injuries, still feeling a quite uh, good lineup. Um, Moise Ken is assisted by Di Maria in the 11th, makes it 1-0 uh, and then Idrissa Gay has to come off, Rafinha comes on, but fortunately they still have Di Maria in great form who hit uh, the post at one point. He scored the second goal of an Ender Herrera assist, but also Tilo Kera had to come off. And uh, it was more or less PSG. Yes, Ren had a few chances, uh, namely in Zonzi, but PSG has Di Maria and at least one Galactico, if you like, and it makes it 3-0 in the 73rd minute. So two goals, one assist. 
Di Maria looking strong after his penalty miss in Leipzig. Um, then Lil, who Lil, who dominated completely Milan uh, 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 during, uh, during the week, goes to Brest and find themselves down within 42 minutes, three nil. Three nil down. I mean, yes. Brest was rather clear, uh, clinically. Uh, I mean, in the 15th and 19th, they scored the first goals of Pierre, Pierre Gabriel and Perrault. Cardona uh, adds a third, third one, but then uh, Lille gets at least a penalty in the lifeline just before they have that Yilmaz um, converts. Yilmaz then makes the makes it 3-2 in the 57th, and Lille then was really trying to get at least the equalizer, if not the win, and they had a the big chance with Yilmaz hitting late the post. They had other chances as, as well. They probably would have deserved at least a draw out of this one. The craziest game was between Lens and Reims. Lens finally playing. They had two games where they could not play because of COVID. They actually take a 1-0 lead and it looks all fine. Then, I mean, what Reims, the next three goals, the first two were for Reims, both goalkeeping errors, especially the second one uh, through DR, who the goalkeeper has, has the ball there, left to jump over him. So it's 2-1 uh, for Reims. Um, an own goal by Fouquet. Absolutely unnecessary. I mean, he's standing there. There's no one around. He touches while it goes in, 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 into the net. But uh, Medina deflects them into his own net as well for, for uh, Reims again. So it's 3 to Reims in the 79th. And uh, Dia, who already made the second goal, makes it 4 to it. You think every, everything is fine? No! Sotoka in the, 90th, in the 91st gets two goals for loss. Well, then he would have got the penalty, but that was taken away by VAR. Absolute nuts game between those two 4-4. Four, four. What more do you want? Um, we have not winning a Metz and Dijon a draw. Angers big win over um, Nîmes. Monaco wins a Southern Derby against Nice 2-1. So Monaco getting good and then the Rhone Derby between Lyon and Saint-Étienne. Uh, Saint-Étienne actually came for a first on score sheet with a nice, uh, with an own goal by uh, Anthony Lopez. However, the equalizer by, Car by Cadavere, I think he was the leading goal scorer in the second league last la season. Nice um, free free kick. It's played out left to Cornet, who puts puts it in, and Kaka Cadavere with kind of jumping in and then putting it a uh, heel on it makes it one one, and then he even gets the winner seventy first seventy fourth. In the eighty eighth, uh, Buanga misses a penalty that could have stopped the losing streak for Saint Etienne, which means now with all the results, with Lille losing and, and uh, Rennes losing to PSG. So PSG, with having so many injuries, is flying high. Just look at the goal difference. This is Ajax. With, but they didn't have one game where they won a lot. No. They won. They they have a consistently now scoring at least three goals or more. They have eight wins in, in a row. Remember? We had them at two losses to start the season. And since then, they have only conceded once. So uh, PSG absolutely flying in the in, in the league. There is no real clear challenger there. Yes, Marseille, if they win, could maybe go to 20, 21 points. But no, I don't see Marseille. I don't see Lyon. Uh, I, I don't see Lyon. I don't. Maybe Lille has a chance. Rennes clearly did not have. So uh, looks pretty uh, set there. Uh, in on the bottom of of the table with Lorient, Nîmes. Uh, although Strasbourg is consistently in there, let, let's see the Saint Etienne. I'm a little bit worried about. Here we also know the matchups for the next round, and I think it's the Monaco PSG matchup on Friday. I think both Friday matchups sound good, but Bordeaux is so horrible at the moment. On Saturday, if uh, Marseille against Nice again, and a uh, very southern duel that could be interesting, but other than that, I think there's not really the standard time, maybe except Monaco against uh, PSG. Portugal, we had one game postponed, which will be played on the 1st of December between Morales and Passos, but we look at the big guys. Sporting getting a very resounding 4-0 victory at Vitoria de Guimarães. Um, that Sporting really low, looking good as, as of late. Porto beats Porto Monense ex, uh, expectedly 3 1. But then what did Benfica do? No. Benfica, uh, who with a man down, got this 3 3 against Rangers. I mean, probably that cost cost him a little bit. Find himself down through a Madero uh, goal in the uh, 38th minute, 1 0 to Braga. 
uh, but the second half then really exploded the game. Mura scores two in the 50th and 63rd. In between, Benfica had already chances. In the 68th, Seferovic gives Benfica a lifeline. In the 86th, he gets another goal. And then he had a huge chance to equalize. Uh, did not make it. Uh, and then I think in the last minute he did the equalizer and uh, it did not count. So Benfica with another loss. What's happening to Benfica in, in, in the league? If you look at the table now, we have Sporting four points clear. That it was unexpected. Benfica uh, is hanging in there. Uh, just, but you know, having a two law, loss in a row after a great start. Braga now Cal caught up with, with Benfica and Porto is also up there. Uh, so yeah, Portuguese league, maybe we, we get an upset here. In the next round, uh, do we have any great matchup? I honestly, everyone is uh, playing either island teams or lower level teams from the top team. So there's not a real huge matchup there. So that ends our trip through Western Europe. Boy, there were actually quite some things to talk about in there. I want to know your thoughts on all these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.